Coming up, the story of how a British supergroup followed one of the biggest selling albums of all time with a, a bold venture that utterly confused their core faithful. I mean, it would have been a no-brainer to simply stay the course and give fans what they were used to. But this group went the other way, and they purposely abandoned the heavy blues rock sound that they were famous for. I mean, the second single from this long play deviation, it was a reggae song. It was named after the punchline of an old vaudeville comedy routine. We tell the joke and we break down the anomaly of one of the most mispronounced and misunderstood rock songs of the rock and roll era. Coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever played Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon uh, while watching The Wizard of Oz, tried that little thing, you're gonna be right at home with this channel. Make sure that you subscribe below right now and do click the bell so you always know when our videos drop. Also, you can become a VIP at our Patreon below. In 72, Led Zeppelin was working on new material for the all-important follow-up to the blockbuster success of the monumental album, Led Zeppelin IV. However, if fans were expecting an extension of four, they were sorely mistaken. I mean, the last thing that they wanted to do was try to duplicate their past glory, Zeppelin. The exalted foursome of John Bonham, John Paul Jones, Jimmy Page, and Robert Plant entered the sessions for their fifth offering, open to anything except the norm. For the record that would be named Houses of the Holy, Led Zeppelin reveled in a spirit of adventure and imagination, even creating a reggae song that they titled after a joke from an old music called comedy routine. Music halls were very popular throughout England from the mid 19th century to the mid 20th century. I should knock myself out one night, I know I will. There's a twist that went right round. Uh, of course, the venues were filled with music and comedy, sparking jokes that poke fun at the, the Cockney fanatics of working class East End London. The jokes were often absorbed from the theater and used in British pop culture. There was a hilarious my wife jokes, you know, two guys having a dialogue while speaking to each other in a heavy Cockney accent, like this one. I don't know Cockney very well, but first guy says, my wife's band recently won on tour of Southeast Asia. Second guy responds quizzically, Singapore? First guy answers, yeah, and the bass is rubbish too. Then there's this old gag that the members of Led Zeppelin adopted for one of their songs on Houses of the Holy. A lot of people don't know this. First guy says, my wife recently went on a holiday to the West Indies. Second guy responds, Jamaica? First guy answers, no, she went on her own accord. The thick Cockney accent makes the Jamaica sound like Jamaica. And that's what the guys decided to name the song, is Jamaica? Uh, in the UK, the song was pronounced Jamaica, but in America, the song was always mispronounced, either referred to as uh, Deer Maker or Dire Maker. I mean, I'll admit I used to mispronounce it. But it, it did make me feel better to know that Casey Kasem himself also mispronounced the song. He said Deer Maker on the American Top 40 Countdown back in 73. In Radio 2 ZT, New Plymouth, New Zealand. From England, here's Led Zeppelin with Dia Maker. It didn't help that the lyrics didn't include the title and actually had nothing to do with the song title. Clearly, Zeppelin fans in the States were not familiar with the Cockney humor, and even though the band tried to make the pronunciation easier by intentionally including apostrophes in the spelling of the song title, the American audience ignored them and just went with Dire Maker or Deer Maker. Jimmy Page grew tired of being asked to explain the meaning of the song to the American media, especially the quirkiness of the, the song title. Uh, hardcore Zeppelin disciples knew of Jimmy Page's fascination with the occult and marveled at Robert Plant's lyrical mysticism. So they refused to believe that, you know, that there was nothing enigmatic about the song. Truth about the conception of the song would prove hard for diehards to stomach, really. Jamaica uh, embodied the, the positive energy that surrounded the making of Houses of the Holy. <laughs> 
Zeppelin was determined to make an album that was distinctly different from their previous four records. Although Led Zeppelin IV was an enormous success, one of the biggest albums of all time, they didn't want to follow a, a formula. You know, Jimmy Page felt it was dangerous for this band to, to duplicate themselves. Jimmy Page called Houses of the Holy an album of many moods. He was very happy with the final product, as I understand it, because to him, the album was not a one-listen record. It was, you know, it challenged the average Zeppelin fan who anticipated that the band's fifth album would be somewhat of a continuation of the powerful Zeppelin IV. You really had to spend time with this record. You had to absorb it, to, to feel it. To all At the same time, Robert Plant, he also found the outcome of Houses of the Holy very fulfilling. A lot of imagination went into that record, Plant boasted. He, he proudly summarized that he preferred Houses of the Holy 2 for actually. To accomplish the making of something fresh and unique, the band went into the recording of Houses of the Holy with a blank canvas. Each band member had free reign to implement their creativity in the songwriting and musicianship. As we further break down this classic song, I do want to recognize our sponsors, Any Eyewear, the rock star choice for glasses, if there ever was one. You want to feel and look like a rock star. Zenny is really the only way to go. Such selection. Go to zenny.com, choose your color, your shape, your style. You just put in your prescription for there, and then you can even see what you look like before you buy with Zenny's uh, amazing mirror features. Really cool. Check it out today at zenny.com. The album was recorded in the Rolling Stones mobile studio, located on the property of Mick Jagger's sprawling Stargrove's house, a mansion on a beautiful spread of land in East Woodhay, England. Jagger owned the estate in the 70s, and it was the recording site of the Stones during that period. It was also a primary filming location for the sci-fi movie Doctor Who. When the band arrived at Stargrove's, they were freewheeling uh, musicians with no idea what they were going to record. The primary objective was getting the guys together and, and letting the creativity flow. Eddie Kramer was back to mix Houses of the Holy, returning after a, a comical yet unfortunate following out with the band. I guess during the recording sessions for Zeppelin III, the band came into the studio with serious rock star attitudes that put Kramer on edge. Uh, I guess things hit a boiling point in New York City at the Electric Lady, uh, which was a creative lab designed by, of course, Hendrix. So here's what happened. Uh, the band ordered some Indian food and disrespectfully spilled piles of the food on the studio floor. Now, Kramer directed the band's roadies to clean it up since the studio was new and Kramer treated the venue with great pride. The band took exception to Eddie Kramer ordering their roadies around and angrily jumped all over the engineer. You don't tell our roadies what to do, do you understand? And then the band just walked out in a huff and, and Kramer didn't speak to him for well over a year. The communication breakdown, as it were, was mended when Zeppelin manager Peter Grant called Eddie to tell him the guys wanted him back to work on their fifth record. As if the temper tantrum never even happened. Zeppelin had a passive aggressive relationship with their engineers. Andy John started off with the job for Houses of the Holy, but he was quickly sacked by Jimmy Page. Page, who had, of course, produced the previous four Led Zeppelin albums, was miffed at Johns for what he and his bandmates thought was a, a subpar effort on Zeppelin IV. The band listened to the album on a playback, and I guess they cringed. Page had to remix the entire album, which caused a three-month delay to release the record to the public. Page resumed his role as producer for Houses of the Holy, and he worked well in tandem with Kramer to create uniquely distinctive sounds for each instrument. Uh, they effectively turned the mansion into a recording studio with some very resourceful ingenuity. For example, Jimmy Page's amp was placed in a fireplace with a microphone wired in the chimney way above, and Bonham's drum set was moved to a conservatory that was adjoined to the main studio area. The acoustics in that room, they produced a booming effect that was perfect for Bonzo's aggressive playing style. <music> Fittingly, the foundation for which uh, Jamaica 
was uh, built from a, a bonzo drum beat. He began playing a beat that the band thought sounded like a 50s doo-wop song and then added a slight offbeat tempo that you know, spawned the idea to develop a reggae influence to what Bonzo was playing. Even though he, he stuck to his, his trusty Ludwig Green Sparkle drum kit, Bonzo was able to pound out a different sound on Jermaker. Uh, what made Bonzo's bomb drop intro on Jermaker so profound was the placing of three live microphones a good distance away from his kit to, to capture a powerful reverberation. And Robert Plant, he was keen on an idea to invent a song with a reggae pastiche mixed with a doo-wop sound, something that would not be easy to do. From the outset, it was clear that Jermaker was going to be a, a very big departure from the heavy blues rock sound that propelled the band to the pinnacle of rock and roll majesty. I mean, Led Zeppelin doing doo-wop rock and roll? Who would have thought? But the music on Jamaica uh, evolved into a cross between reggae and an early 60s pop number. Page like in Jamaica to uh, Walking in the Footsteps of a Fool. It's a 1962 cut by former lead singer of the Drifters, Benny King. Do these two songs sound similar to you? Oh, oh. Page and Plant loved what Jim Aker represented, something completely different. They also had a passion for reggae music. Now Bonham, on the other hand, hated reggae. Or rather, he hated to play reggae because he found it boring. It was certainly counterintuitive to his wild, ferocious nature. It's one of the reasons why Jim Aker uh, never made the, the set list for a Zeppelin concert. As accomplished as they were, it would have been difficult for the group to replicate the song on stage, but it was a moot point because John Bonham refused. Jonesy never liked Jamaica uh, to begin with. He called the track boring and repetitive. Ironically, it was Jonesy's bass groove that, that gave this song its reggae rhythm. And his keyboard flourishes and injected a juke joint liveliness to that track. They weren't united on how they felt about Jamaica, but uh, personally, it was one of the few tracks where all four members were credited with its composition. Robert Plant also delivered one of his most memorable vocals for Jamaica with uh, his rattling interjections, the oh, 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 oh. oh. Every breath I take, every move I make, oh baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go. His stuttering vowel delivery in the chorus and his forlorn pleading, which is consummate Robert Plant. In addition to perplexing their millions of fans and testing the media by naming the song Jamaica, uh, after a cockney joke, Jimmy Page had more fun with a curveball in the song's obsessive refrain. Page layered a mysterious vocal track with Plant whispering, fire. Three times near the end of the song. The vocal track sparked another debate. Uh, is Plant whispering fire or is he whispering by? There's a lot of strong opinions on both sides. Although the general consensus is fire. I think it's fire. Robert Plant and Jimmy Page are leaving it up to private interpretation, which is the Zeppelin way, let's be honest. Oh. We all know that Zeppelin was not a singles band. And it was their policy not to press singles in the UK. The label tried to get the band to make an exception for Jamaica, manufacturing test and promotional copies, but the band vetoed the proposal to distribute anything beyond that. Jamaica was uh, only released as a 45 in a few countries, and it performed pretty well. I mean, it peaked at number 24 in Canada, went to number 20 in New Zealand, and number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 here. Uh, it was the second single to be dropped from Houses of the Holy, following uh, Over the Hills and Far Away, which stalled on the Billboard Hot 100 at, I believe, 51. 
Meanwhile, the eclectic Houses of the Holy was one of the biggest selling albums around the world in 1973, holding the number one position on the LP charts in the US and the UK for several weeks. More than 12 million units of Houses of the Holy have been sold in America alone. Some of the most popular Zeppelin songs are tracks on Houses of the Holy, such as The Song Remains the Same, originally titled The Overture. The Rain Song, which we've covered here, Over the Hills and Far Away, which we will. Dancing Days and the Ocean. It ranks as the fourth best-selling Led Zeppelin album of all time behind Led Zeppelin II, just over 13 million copies sold. Uh, Physical Graffiti with over 16 million sold. Of course, Zeppelin IV with 24 million units sold. Jamaica is one of those Zeppelin songs that people just love, even if they don't like Zeppelin as a band. My dad had the A track at Houses of the Holy when I was growing up, and. He claimed it as his favorite Zepp song. He used to play it when we were doing work in the shop and I could still picture him in his white painting overalls, boogieing to the, to the song, just dancing around with his trademark smile and his hilarious Robert Plant imitation. Uh, great memories. Look, regardless of whether you call the song Deer Maker, Dyer Maker, or Jamaica, with a Cockney twist, the Jamaica was another jewel in Led Zeppelin's cluster of diamonds and another glimpse into the many sides of this incredible legendary band. Make sure to share your memories of these songs. What do you think about Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy? What do you think about Jamaica? How do you pronounce it? How did you pronounce it? Uh, let's get into a good discussion below. Uh, share with us in the comments uh, your memories as, as well. I'd love to hear those. If you like this video, we do invite you to become a, a part of this community by subscribing. Check us out on Patreon. Help us keep the music alive. That's the idea. Till next time, three chords and the truth.